State of Affairs is pleased to welcome our good friend, Senator Tom Kane, Jr., Republican, Republican leader in the Senate. How are you doing, Senator? It's great. It's great to see you again, Steve. Good to have you. Uh, Senator, put things in perspective for us. <clears throat> a few days after, when this shows, it'll be a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. Legalized sports betting means what in New Jersey? I think it's positive. It's revenue. It's new energy. I think it's good. obviously something that brings people together and has. We, I think it's going to be positive for the state. You're not concerned about some of those who say, you know what, we are promoting gambling and those who may have a problem get sucked into it and that's the state's well, responsibility. We, well, we always, always need to be protective of the downside. And uh, My hope would be some of the revenue that we use would be used for some of those addiction and other related problems. That happens in any venue. But the goal is here is say, legalize what's already happening across the country, make it a you know, regulated industry, and then also protect people on the downside for who may have a gambling addiction. It's interesting. This is bipartisan, isn't it? It was strongly bipartisan. And that's rare in the state house. Well. You see the dome behind you. <laughs> that is rare. It, 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 well, actually, it, it should be more common. I mean, there are things that I think we can find common ground on, on you know, ways to make the state more affordable, make sure that we make sure people can go, go to school in the state of New Jersey, make mm. sure people can afford to live here. I mean, what should be our common goal is three generations of families live in the state of New Jersey. And there are mm. ways we can get there on you know, real and substantive policies, but when people look at Trenton right now, they say, who's racing to increase taxes? You've got a Senate president that wants to have the highest corporate tax in the country, Steve Sweeney. Steve Sweeney. You have a, and a governor who wants to have the highest income tax in the country. And at a time when New Jersey is saying, we want to attract people like Amazon, we want to attract millennials, we want to attract people who are going to be, you know, the wonderful citizens of New Jersey, that's sending the very wrong message. So it is, unfortunately, the Democratic majority is focused on increasing taxes. The Senate Republicans and, and others are saying, how do, oh, how do we constrain costs? I mean, can you imagine a state where people are saying, our property taxes are affordable. There are educational opportunities, not only in the K through 12, but the you know the higher education uh, sphere as well. That's actually Which affordable, very and, 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 it's cheap, in state, and and it's achievable in many cases. Well, and if you can say, okay, I'm going to get my first job out of college in New Jersey. I'm going to get my second job in and New Jersey. And stay in New Jersey. And stay in New Jersey. <clears throat> and I'm going to, you know, and, like, and then I'm going to retire in New Jersey. Because think about this: the one thing people are talking about is they're saying right now, in five years. I'm leaving the state of New Jersey. Too many people are saying that. And the more people say because that. Because it's unaffordable? Because it's unaffordable. And so what they're saying is, if they change that state in 10 years, I'm going to give the state a chance. That means they're not moving to Pennsylvania. Because people moving to Pennsylvania. Or Florida. Not to the weather. No, they're not moving to Florida. What the, do you mean the they're most, not moving? Most There's people, no income tax most, there. That's true. But most people are moving to Pennsylvania or New York State. Because of a lower income tax? Because of the lower tax rate overall. Okay. And they don't tax retirement incomes. There are a variety of things like that. So you have people who are doing that but, at all ages. But and if, if you look at great companies like J&J. &J, what does J&J right have to do with it? Well, half, look, think about this. Half of their employees, 8,000 are in New Jersey. Half are in Pennsylvania. This last two, the current CEO, last two CEOs are Pennsylvania residents. We've a company got a in change. New Brunswick? Yes, has half of its J &J employees. happens to be one of our underwriters. And, and it's a great company. It is a great company. Yeah, but half of its employees are in Pennsylvania. So what we have to do is this. Rather than send the signal out of Trenton, or whether it's Senate President Sweeney or Governor Murphy who's saying, let's increase spending, let's first have the conversation on how do you reduce costs? And there are ways we can reduce costs on the citizens of New Jersey very quickly, very responsibly. If you focus on ways we can have a real conversation on pension and health benefits reforms, okay. you could save billions okay, of dollars. We're, we're speaking with uh, State Senator Tom Kane. He is, in fact, the leader of the... Uh, the Senate uh, for the Republicans. Let's let's do this. <clears throat> Steve Adubato here, and uh, the question is: You talked about the pension situation. Mm -hmm. We could save money if we uh, did what with the pension? Didn't you guys do that in 2011 with Governor Christie, together with the Democrats in the legislature? You were involved as well. You cut benefits. You changed all kinds of things about the public employee pension situation. Now it's still in an 80 plus Act billion dollar hole. What right. did you do right? I, I, actually, it was one third of the Democrats. Joined us. Okay, every but Republican it senator, on board. respectfully. So it what we need to do now? If you hadn't had everyone together. Now, now what we need to do? We had strong bipartisan support. Yes, so what we did, have to including now, the Senate President, Steve who, who was a leader in that fight and continues to talk about it because he was a leader at the time and since. But now what we need to do is look at the next generation. Right now we we've got to look at the health and pension issues and folks say right now Obama said on the Cadillac tax for health care, for example. You're saying public employees 36, should no longer get what you're calling a Cadillac health care plan. President Obama called it a Catholic health care plan. What should we it's be doing? $36,000. If we reduce it to the highest, like the equivalent of the highest corporate rate in the, in this, in the state, in that type of benefit level, you could save, according to uh, Tom Byrne and Healy. Who headed up the uh, pension commission. Yes, you could save 
$1.4 billion a year on the state level. Now, if you look at this on the, on the municipal and the county level and the school board level, it'd be an additional $2.5 billion in savings. So you'd be able to follow through responsibly. Well, you'd meet all of your but obligations and all your responsibilities. But you be hurting public employees who are not overpaid you, 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 as it you, is? You would actually be able, we, we can find common ground in this area. We found common ground in the past on a bipartisan basis. We can find common ground here. President, everybody from Republicans and Democrats alike want to say, if you focus on those individuals, we've got to honor the obligations to those, those employees, mm. honor the obligations of taxpayers, because at the end of the day, employees? they would have, they would, what would happen here is they would be able to spend less on a daily basis for their own health care. So it would be right. more affordable for the taxpayers as well as the employees. It would be a responsible approach that we, I think we can have strong bipartisan support on going forward and be billions of dollars responsible. Do this, Senator. By the way, with uh, Senator Tom Kane, Steve Adubato here, I just want to ask you this. Real quick, uh, higher education, uh, there was a study that was done. Give me a minute or less on affordability issue and what we found. Right. Well, what we have to figure out is why are students leaving the state of That's New the Jersey? brain drain. It's brain drain. What kind of advice are they getting from their high school guidance counselors when they're looking at their career choices? How, what kind of you know, pressures are happening at home? Why, what do we need to do to say we've got great you know, high, school, high, high schools, great higher education plans, but there's no plan. We've not updated the college, uh, of, you know, how we spend money on colleges from the state level since Rutgers became the state university in the 60s. So what we've got to say is how do we refocus the purpose, have a strategic mission, and find common ground to say we've got to make high school and people graduate from high school college career ready. We've got to have colleges that are affordable and have meaningful degrees that can translate to jobs. We've got to have a partnership between everybody from higher education to government to industry to nonprofits, we can do that together and we can have a situation where more than three generations of New Jerseyans stay in New Jersey as opposed to... Because we lose the and we lose that tax revenue and everything else. But we else. also lose the families. Think, it's not just the tax revenues. Think about this. People are on the planes more frequently now than they've ever been before. Think about what that does to the time you spend with your family. Mm. Think about the people on Father's Day who missed it because their, their parents are in Florida or in Pennsylvania. Think about the kids that had to do a phone call because or of economic Skype. reasons. Because largely. of economic reasons and the family impact on that. Think about the strength of the families and the state. That's what gets the, the pride One in the state. One more quick item, uh, Senator. I want to ask you about the quality of water. You're concerned deeply about this, particularly water quality in urban schools. Go. Yes, we need to do everything we can to make sure that the lead is not getting into those schools, But how is lead pipes. getting into the water in those pipes? They're old pipes. We need to focus on how do we, you know, the infrastructure is, that's going to be a, a conversation I think the legislature is going to have now. How is, it, it, you know, how is the lead, you know, solder in the pipes? How is that seeping through? And what's an affordable, responsible solution? We've had the lessons to learn from, from Flint, Michigan. There's lessons to learn from across the Could country. Could we have that again? Could we have Flint in New Jersey? I think we've got to do everything we can to make sure we've got to have a safe drinking water throughout New Jersey. This is uh, State Senator Tom Kane, who has been the Republican leader for a few years? Yes. How many? Uh, going on 12. Does it feel longer? Uh, <laughs> Senator Tom Kane's in the House. This is State of Affairs. I'm Steve Adubato. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Steve. We'll be back after this. <laughs> State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Agnes Veris NJTV studio at 2 Gateway. Funding has been provided by the law firm of Gibbons PC, Johnson & Johnson, Englewood Health, Suez, NJ Best, New Jersey Council of County Colleges. And by these public-spirited organizations, individuals, and associations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State. And by Employers Association of New Jersey. What is your child's dream for the future? Doctor? Teacher? Architect? Whatever they aspire to be, a college education may realize those dreams. And NJ Best can help. It's the college savings plan specifically designed for New Jersey families. Start saving today with as little as $25, because now is the time to invest in their future. To learn about NJ Best 529 College Savings Plan, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, read the Investor Handbook available at njbest.com.